morning, everyone. Um, thank you, DevOps Day London, for organizing this event. So today, I'm going to talk about navigating unconscious bias in open source communities. So who am I? I'm Akansha, and I'm currently working as a DevRel at VMake Devs. And um, like in past, I've done community management, and here are my socials. Uh, socials where we can connect with me. So before actually deep diving into the main topic, um, I let's go through some scenarios that you might have witnessed or went through yourself. So in the first scenario, there was a senior employee and a junior employee, and they went to a conference and gave a joint talk. And later in the Q and A session, um, the attendees just asked questions from the senior employee. In the next scenario, there was a community event that was being planned. And the community manager assumed that all the travel-related work stuff could be done by the male members. And in the third scenario, Julia wanted to give a talk at some conference, but she was not allowed um, because she didn't have any prior experience. So you see, right, there were hidden biases in all the three scenarios. So what was that one word that comes to your mind when you heard the term bias? I'm pretty sure it must be revolving around words like favoritism, negativity, inclination, assumption, and so on. So why does it matter? Because even I have a bias, and I'm pretty sure even all of you have some kind of, um, OK. So first, coming to what is unconscious bias. So it's like a kind of prejudice or stereotype like people have against certain group of people, and they are not aware of having them. So, why does it matter, as I said, that, um, like, <laughs> so, like, we just don't go around hurting people who are not members of our own group. We do it in a very civilized way. We, uh, we discriminate on the basis of whom we're helping. So, the better question to ask yourself, is my help landing on the most deserved or not? And also, biases are everywhere, but it doesn't mean you are let off the hook. Um, you, like Biases are inevitable, but it's not immovable. So there are a lot of biases, and I will try to cover a quite few of them, which are quite common. So the first one that will come up is affinity bias. It's like a similar to me effect. So I am biased towards people whom I feel comfortable with, and I'm biased against people who I'm not comfortable with. So there is a likability factor that gets involved in this affinity bias. Then comes the ageism bias, where I'm having a feeling of persuasion towards people on the basis of their age. So like, and then comes the authority bias. So it's like I'm having an inclination to trust people who hold a certain position of power and responsibility. Then we have the um, anchor bias. So it's very simple. It's like I'm hooked up to people on the basis of the very first impression that I hold on. And research also says that you should not close off on the very first impression that you get. And gender bias, pretty obvious, you are discriminating on the basis of gender. Then contrast effect is like you are comparing two or more things which you came in contact with. Either you're doing it simultaneously or one after another. Then we have the horn effect. So it's like a cognitive bias where you make a snap judgment about someone on the basis of one negative de trait that you led on to. And halo effect is just the opposite of the same. So now comes the question that, why it like how we can recognize and avoid it so the pause framework is the answer to it you need to understand that biases are everywhere we need to accept it and we need to determine those and after you determine it you need to block it away be wary of your first impressions also like broaden your mind perspective and interfere with it before it interferes with your decision also like you might be seeing around that biases are happening and we should call it out. And you might be in a dilemma that how we can do so, but we can actually do so by doing it respectfully. You can actually reflect on those that whether it is right and wrong, and then you can together come to a decision collectively. Then lastly, I would like to say, and there was a quote, that it's not at all hard to understand a person. It's only hard to listen without a bias. So the trick is to figure out like what the biases are, and then you interfere with it before it interferes with your decision. Thank you.